So once upon a time, there was a cat that lived in a valley where the gold dome glowed morning, noon, and night. This cat was placed into a box with a vial of toxic acid that was produced at one of the nearby chemical plants. And if this vial were to break, the cat from the valley where the gold dome glowed morning, noon, and night would probably die. The only way to know if the cat from the valley where the gold dome glowed morning, noon, or night in the box with the vial of acid that was manufactured at the nearby chemical plant was really dead or alive is to open the box. The cat is either dead or alive. There's a 50-50% chance either way because the cat can't be both dead and alive, right? But until you open the box, the cat is technically dead and alive. The cat is in a state of superposition. A famous thought experiment by Edward Schrodinger illustrates how things exist in multiple states, or at the same time, a paradox, until you open the box. Until we open the box and take a look-see, the cat in the valley, where the gold dome glows morning, noon, or night, is technically dead and alive. I think the cat in the box from the valley where the gold dome glows morning, noon, or night is West Virginia. And I think that we, the people of West Virginia, near and far, are the ones doing the observing. We have the power to open the box. We have the potential to open the box to be something wilder than wonderful, but we need to fearlessly open the box and have a look-see. My name is Crystal Good, sometimes good woman. I'm a mama, a writer poet, a quantum Christian, an Afrolachian, African American Appalachian. Also, I make no apologies for the use of my double nouns or my Appalachian English, and I love quantum physics even though I don't fully understand it, but as the great physicist Richard Feynman said, if you think you understand quantum physics, then you don't. <laughs> and I don't understand with perfect understanding how until you open a box, the cat in the valley where the gold dome glows morning, noon, and night is both dead and alive. <laughs> I'm from where the gold dome glows morning, noon, and night, and yes, that is real gold on our dome, Charleston, the capital of West Virginia. And as some of you may know, the capital wasn't always in Charleston. It was in Wheeling, and then Charleston, and then Charleston, and then Wheeling, and then Wheeling, and then Charleston. And it's the dualities in West Virginia like this that lead me to believe the state was born in and still is in a state of superposition where all things are possible. West Virginia, for example, is the southernmost northernest, the northernmost southernest state in the eastern time zone. West Virginia isn't really even west of Virginia, but kind of up and over. West Virginia was both Union and Confederate in the Civil War. And today, West Virginia is a Democratic state that votes Republican. <laughs> and West Virginia is a state sitting at the crossroads, teeming with billboards that read, coal keeps the lights on, yet we're one of the poorest states in the nation. We have yet to settle out of this superposition, this quantum foam. We have yet to open the box to have a look-see. And even with our 150-year-old history, we are still defining ourselves to each other and the nation. And speaking of defining ourselves, I call this next slide the graphic of the dreaded poles and stereotypes. We have plenty of data calling ourselves the worst, this or that, and plenty of stereotypes to debate. But perhaps the one that we can all agree on is West Virginia is small. And in our super size me jumbo world, small doesn't seem to matter. But small things do matter. Quantum physics proves it. Quantum physics deals with small particles, the things too small to see with our naked eyes. Particles, 
subatomic and atomic that make up our bodies, make up our world. We take small things for granted, small things like thoughts and ideas. We don't think of quantum leaps as something important because they're not big, but a quantum is tiny. It's small, yet definitive. It's precise. It's the first step. West Virginia took a quantum leap on June 20th, 1863, when its citizens voted yes with the formation of a new state. And I think, well, I see, we are preparing to take another leap. And here's the crazy thing about quantum leaps. In the particle world, nobody understands how particles can leap. But they can, and they do. It drove Einstein crazy because it doesn't make any sense. It breaks the rules of classic physics, and if you've ever been across West Virginia, you know that sometimes we break the rules. In fact, we broke the rules just by becoming a state. We're the only state to become a state without constitutional consent. Small things matter. And one day, I did a small thing. I bowed down to the Google gods with a simple search request or a prayer request asking for Appalachian African American poets. I had entered thinking I can't be the only one I can't be. I wasn't, and I'm not. I found Frank X. Walker and Nikki Finney and the Afro-Latin poets, an esteemed collection of writers from across the globe whose sole mission is to make the invisible visible. And to my great honor, I was invited to join the group. Shortly thereafter, Nikki Finney challenged me to write to riff, she said, about quantum physics and West Virginia. I said, okay, which one? Quantum physics or West Virginia? She said, both, together, you, riff. I started looking, and then I saw a state of creative possibilities. I began to riff West Virginia and quantum physics because small things matter. Small things was the bridge, the connection I was looking for to make sense of West Virginia and quantum physics. <laughs> my job as a poet is to take a look-see. And when I found my tribe of poets, I found people with whom I shared positive perceptions about West Virginia, a common belief in Appalachian diversity and creativity. I was given permission to think differently, to observe and to be observed with purpose, to riff in this quantum symphony and look-see. West Virginia and quantum physics, the words are as slippery and resistant to definition as poet. And poetry has always been aware of the huge possibilities. Expectations, in a blank page or a computer screen, there exists infinity, a field of possibilities, a box to open. The father of quantum physics, Niels Bohr, said, the poet is not nearly as concerned with describing the facts as creating images. And I try to create images where individuals are particles and poems entangled in cooperation in a field of possibility. I see poems in this field like computer networks or even better as jazz musicians, where every player is improvising yet keeping rhythm with the whole. I imagine in this cooperative cohesion that particles like musicians riff and small towns thrive. The reason small towns like jazz bands matter is that they tend to be more nimble. Scale is doable. And you know pretty quickly if a song is going to work out. We are all programmed to be thinking big, but big thinking starts small. Small particles matter, small poems matter, and small towns matter. Although it's not yet the coolest town in America like Lewisburg, small towns like Rand, West Virginia, matter. The unincorporated town of Rand has always fascinated me. I started passing by Rand as a child as my mother went to work at the nearby chemical plant, DuPont. And my dad and my auntie all lived there. And I recently found out that my grandmother was born there. It's a place full of contradictions. It's black and white neighborhoods. It's trailers beside new constructions. And it's home to the famous former resident, its coincidental namesake, Randy Moss. 
the mercurial all-pro athlete who has on more than one occasion defied physics. But what most people don't know is that the small area around Rand also created in the same generation other professional athletes. Jason Williams with the NBA, Eric Moss, NFL, Bobby Howard, NFL, Sammy Singleton, the MLB, and that music man, Timmy Quartz. It's small. In fact, I can name all the streets in Rand. They're in alphabetical order, named after colleges and universities. Athens, Bluefield, Clemson, Davidson, Emory, and on. And the great Jerry West, he's from the town just up the road. In small towns, West Virginia, I've noticed that sometimes people gather to pray for little league sports. And that is perhaps how Rand got Randy and all the other talents, because small towns don't necessarily dream of doctors and lawyers and academics. Although maybe, just maybe, Piedmont, West Virginia did with Dr. Henry Louis Gates, the esteemed Harvard professor and one of America's great cultural critics. What if small towns took a broader look-see at the natural talent within themselves and started praying and investing in resources to expand the achievements of not only our athletes, but our thinkers and poets and scientists? According to the cat in the box theory, we've got a 50% chance. The cat in the box suggests that the mere act of observing affects a person, place, or thing. The same applies to West Virginia. Our small state, previously overlooked, now lives in a world where even the small can contribute in a big way. The ability to look and see us here in West Virginia can both alleviate myths or push them to the forefront. I come from a land where we string echoes together. I come from a land that people don't often look to, but I want people to start looking at our state with a sense of possibility. We have nothing to hide and everything to discover about ourselves. And I've been on the most exciting adventure in my thinking and writing, connecting quantum physics to poetry and my passion for West Virginia. A few years ago, I wrote a poem called Boom Boom. It's about the duality of the word strip. The poem is about the strip mine mountains and the women who strip their clothes off for money. I want to share just a little bit of this poem with you because by using strip mining as a metaphor, I'm also illustrating a perennial West Virginia duality, a superposition of sorts. We hate strip mining's environmental impact, but we sorely need its economic resources. Them boys say, West Virginia girls are gold diggers. Them boys should know better, because in West Virginia, there ain't no gold, just black black coal. And them girls, them West Virginia girls, don't take no handouts. They got a living to make. And stripping is hard work. And every day they get high, pretending not to notice their bodies change. They wait, prepare, grooming landing strips for them hometown millionaires to fly in and then sell them out. Always reminding them they really not worth much. They bend over, taking tips and G-streams, drunk on slurry, holding up their middle finger, thumb out, in a West Virginia sign they shout. <laughs> Damn right we looking for a come up. Where else we got to go? We 49th on America's list of opportunity. <laughs> them boys say they like it when them girls talk back. They say they like them a little wild, a little wonderful. And then they take all their mineral rights. Them boys leave again, off to NASCAR, gone fishing out of state, charity golf for the abuse. They court Miss Kentuckys and smoke cigars sitting on top of them prettier girls, the ones with not so many scars, the ones they build mansions on. Them West Virginia girls cry hardest when the rain falls, causing mudslides and toxic messes, cause in her mind, this is what she deserved. <laughs> them boys say West Virginia girls are gold diggers. Them boys should know better, because in West Virginia, there ain't no gold, just black, black coal. And them boys and them girls just keep blasting the same song. Boom, boom. Them boys like that bass loud. Boom, boom. Them girls shake it. Boom, boom. 
them girls, them boys, them mountains explode. So was the poem about a stripper or a strip mine? Who exploded? The stripper? The mountain? Us? It's about the duality until you decide. And I want our small superposition state of West Virginia to collapse not into destruction, but into creation, into a forward momentum of success because small things matter. I believe that quantum physics, West Virginia, and poetry isn't an imaginary moment, movement, or monument created for the future. There are parallels and synchronicities and poems in everyone's lives. Poetry is what happens when you see them. Muriel Rukeyser said, the universe is not made of atoms, but stories. And through quantum physics, I started writing poems. I discovered my story. I discovered the impact of my internal dialogue and its feedback loop. I can, can't. We can, can't. It operates like a wave particle duality. Ultimately, I found that things get better, or not, depending on how I look at it. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think we can. I challenge all of us to have a real look-see. Be honest with ourselves about the way we think. Be aware of our thoughts. Small things matter. And like the cat, we can, metaphorically speaking, be both dead and alive at the same time. It's the act of self-observation that makes us one or the other. And so many West Virginians act like their fate is determined by an outside observer. All those polls and surveys and stereotypes and studies to decide who we are. So tell me, which cat do you see when you see the future of West Virginia, the world, yourself? When I take a look-see through quantum physics and poetic metaphors, when I open up my poetic crystal box, I see the future in which we are attracting thinkers from across the globe to live, work, and play with us. I see a future where we are leading the world in renewable energy innovation. And every particle that has ever sang country roads will celebrate how West Virginia figured it out. Small things matter in a big world. And by the way, Boom Boom isn't about a stripper or a strip mine. Boom Boom is a heartbeat. Boom Boom, West Virginia is alive. Thank you.